<laughs> Kick it off because I'm making myself a hot beverage. <laughs> I've got time for this. The viewers need an explanation. You do realize I'm going to put that in. So, uh, many of you have asked, been asking about uh, a backlog video of where we actually came from, how we came to be in a motorhome. Uh, so we thought we'd take you through where we started and yeah, take you through those bits really. I mean, first of all, we just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed to us. Um, I mean, we only put our first video up uh, what, two, or, two or three weeks ago, something yeah. like that. Um, hang in there. We are, we are getting some, we're going to get some content out. <laughs> we're just still finding our way. But uh, yeah, it, so, it all started really with a humble little Volkswagen T4. Yep, so we had the T4. Yeah, um, bought that off your, your cousin. That They decided that it was far too small, which it was. Which it was. It was even too small for us. Yeah. Um, so we, we basically ended up buying it off them, fixing it up and doing all the bits to it. And that's really where it started us. Yeah. And then we moved on from there. It was really because we wanted heating a toilet, that was the most important thing. But that's how we actually, we tell this story all the time, so apologies if you've heard it before from us. This is how we got into drinking whiskey. That's how we survived in the T4 without heating, I think. Basically, because <coughs> being the um, novice, novices, I was going to say a different word then, but I'll say novices that we were, we trusted that the rock and roll bed cushions um, would be comfortable enough, which Don't they worry. weren't. Um, we didn't take anything other than just our normal little tiny sleeping bags. Um, again, we, what, we, we don't know what we were doing. It was freezing. We didn't really think all these different things through. No, no. I mean, that's great. You know, fast forward five years, that's fantastic because now we... We've learnt the hard way. We've learnt, we've learnt the hard way, basically. It was a steep learning curve. And obviously, looking back on that Scotland trip now, um, is fond isn't it like mm. it was it was a good time because we stopped in the lake district on the way up so um yeah that was really good actually yeah. we were lucky with the weather as well weren't we in june so in the lake district it was quite warm and then by the time we got to fort william two days later or a day later mm. uh, it was raining the whole time and that's when we learned that we wanted to be able to stand up in the van because it was a tin top and even being as short as we are we still we couldn't stand up in it and we wanted living space because we literally had a living space about this big, didn't we? With the bed out, yeah. With the bed out, there was no room. Well, space. even with it in, because the seats didn't swivel at the front, no, so you no. had to believe it or not, you couldn't, or you could hardly get from the sort of front area to the hab area. So you actually had to go outside the van, didn't you? So it was yeah. kind of like two separate. So it kind of reduced your living space even more. So yeah, we wanted to be able to stand up. We wanted a toilet because we were at the bottom of the field, weren't we, when we were camping? Yeah. It was literally camping in that, and um, the toilets were all the way up there. Yeah, so uh, then cue the Swift. The cue the Swift. Carrera so, 530 LP. I mean, if, if anyone, that, anyone that knows John, and us, you know, as a couple over the years, knows that it's not uncommon for John to just come home with like a different car. This time I came home with a motorhome. <laughs> so John goes away on a course. So I don't know where you got the van from, but apparently it was on the way. Yeah, it was on the way. I, it was, I went up on the train and just bought it there and then, and yeah, it didn't look back. <laughs> yeah, I slept in it. I slept in it. Did you? That on night, the... yeah, in the <laughs> in Beef Eaters car park. <laughs> <laughs> he rocks up at home and this motorhome pulls up outside the front of the house. Yeah. And I'm like... Look what I bought. What? And he was like, yeah, look what I've picked up. And I was just like, but do you know what? I couldn't even be too upset for too long because, um, Rosie, pop it. We're filming. We're... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, yeah, I couldn't be, I couldn't be mad for too long because, um. This motorhome was cheaper than one of the cars I had before. So I had a holiday vehicle and a and a vehicle and it rolled into one which was cheaper than what I was actually running a, a normal car for so mm -hmm. so yeah. we used to use it for days out weekends away 
basically any opportunity that we had and we really really started to love motorhoming didn't we yes with the swift we loved it but we'd already again started to think actually this is brilliant and it's our first it's our first kind of try of a proper coach built motorhome but already we again realized quite quickly what we wanted so, sorry quick interval i've got a drink rosie had to go to the toilet and be fed she's a grazer she is a grazer and she's a diva yes that's fine like John said, when we got the Swift, we loved it, but very quickly we realised we loved the lifestyle, but again we were already, after our experiences with the T4, we were already thinking about all the things that we yeah, wanted. Fixed bed garage. Garage. Newer vehicle. So, yeah, just slightly newer because we were going to make that investment, so obviously being newer, we wanted it to be a longer term investment, so that's why we went. We wanted to go for something newer. and. Um, We'd actually seen uh, a brand at one of our first motorhome shows we went to, didn't we? Yeah. It was an outdoor show, <coughs> A Sun Living. Yeah. We'd never heard of it before. But we. But, but then we were quite new to the whole thing anyway. But you know, looking at motorhomes, we that was one of the ones we went in and we were like, wow, this is like the layout and the colours and the, the like light and airiness of it. And which, the overall size as well, because it was, it was still only six metres long. Yeah, six metres. So it still made it nice and easy for parking because it still had to be your vehicle yeah <clears throat> and uh, we remember didn't we randomly because john did a spreadsheet it's the most organized he's ever been in his whole life did a spreadsheet and um and then we remembered that sun living and there was so we looked it up by chance and there was one wasn't there it wasn't even sun a sun living, living dealer. dealer it was some dealer in halifax, halifax. richard baldwin mm -hmm. Yeah, Richard, Richard Baldwin. Richard Baldwin Motorhomes. Absolutely, yes, yeah. absolutely fantastic. To be fair, yeah, they, were really, they were really good with us. Anyone that knows us knows that we're a little bit sort of once we want something, it's like yeah, screw it, let's do it. So going from Portsmouth to the Lake District, we took a small hundred mile detour to Halifax and then across. So we saw the motorhome, looked at some figures. Still wasn't quite sure because we well we love the motorhome, but the when we looked it. at the figures and sort of tried to work it out, it was going to be a real stretch for us. A and bit of a stretch, and I'm I'm a bit more cautious. I'm a, I get a bit nervous oh. about stuff. I would have just bought it there and then. Literally, <laughs> so because I felt really guilty because we left there. John loved it, mm. and then um and are in for days and days and days, and then one day I was like, right, do you know what? This is when we were on holiday in the Swift. So of course I was like, do you know what? Let's do it. Let's do it. We'll make it work. It's something we really want. So we phoned up and put the deposit down, didn't we? Okay. Um, and then we literally ended up going all the way back home from Scotland and then went all the way back to Halifax like a week or two later to pick it up. Um, so yeah, so that was how we ended up with the Sun Living. We never, we still weren't quite at a full time point then, were we? Oh no, we, no, were, sort we, were, of, we were still working and yeah we never sort of still had careers then well, well i had <laughs> <laughs> lush <laughs> i mean it's true yeah. that's true but um unfortunately we had a couple of people pass away didn't we yeah and then i think the final the final catalyst was um your mum passed away yeah. didn't she we, we sort of had a lot to do um we had a lot to do with that we were like right this is it we're going to make it happen and then we were like we're going to sell our house we're going to sell our house and go traveling um and live in our motorhome and <laughs> people thought we were insane didn't they yeah i see sure so we did it <laughs> we yeah. just literally we we told everyone i think within a within a month and people were like what and i don't i think it's one of those things until you do it or until you start people putting the plans in place do people don't believe you're going to do it so that was only in april and by June, I had finished work because the idea was that I would get the house up together. Yeah, so um, even though I wasn't working in the traditional sense, um, I was actually really busy doing our house, doing your mum's house whilst you're at work, you know, kind of helping out as much as I could. You know, by the end of the year, we sort of started, we put the house on the market. And um, yeah. Yeah. It feels like it feels like an age ago now. Bought, bought the Adria. Yeah. Oh yeah, we bought the Adria. So we bought the Adria that we saw. Yeah. Um. 
So just to add in quickly, we'd actually started looking at the Sonic just before John's mum passed away, funnily enough, uh, looking at something slightly bigger, dreaming of those long-term trips we wanted. And it was only after she passed away and we decided that we were going to go for it that we also decided, right, let's get the van that we're going to do it in. And that's when we fell in love with the Sonic and bought the Sonic. Also, I think it was more for the living the living space for us as well, living wasn't space, it? Because yeah, a bigger garage, again, again fixed bed. Fixed over bed. a big garage, a garage that we could get a motorbike in, because this time I didn't tell Tash that we were going to get a motorbike. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yes, because the motorbike is a brilliant way of getting around in a larger, in a big motor home, which this the Adria was. It had the capacity in the garage to take a small motorbike, so I thought, yeah, that'd be a good way of getting around. We don't want to be taking a car away with us. Um, even though we did in the end. In buy the end, we car, have had a car. <coughs> Only for a little bit, but that's more of a future decision, so we've got it yeah. for whatever happens in the future. With the Adra, it was about sort of the living space for us, wasn't it? Because, like I said, we learnt early on from the T4 what we wanted. Yeah. And <clears throat> like you'd been looking at, and you realised you could get a cab that was kind of the whole width of the van. So then you get this lovely big lounge space. And like I said, we could do it in a smaller mm. van, but actually, we just wanted to be comfortable, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. And you also get the massive open space yeah, rather even though i like the jacato cab anyway i think i just i still like the look of the fiat jacato we still <laughs> love the you current know, shape i really like it I've we love have. we love all motorhomes though don't we yeah, we just yeah. love them themselves but i think as well for us when you think about something that encompasses everything and um, with an a-class you get a double bed above the cab so again for us that's quite important so if we ever had you know like any sort of nieces nephews friends whatever um visiting or staying with yeah. us then you've got, got a bed straight bed, away yeah. and also when you're full time if either of you gets ill again you've got another bed to use yeah. you know because uh, it's just it's just personal preference for us isn't it but yeah. that's what works well for us we, have, we haven't actually used this one have we no um so yeah so then we bought the adria um and obviously plans were going full steam ahead for, yeah. for that and then uh, i think i shared it on our instagram the other day it was actually just over a year ago that I saw the original post because that's a question that um, we get quite a lot is where was it someone said how did you convince Erin Heimer to give you a van um, we bribed them no we didn't really we didn't have to do anything yeah, we, we we literally responded to the advert that they put out and then we didn't hear anything, did we, for like a week or so? No. And we were, ironically, we'd actually gone away to an Adria rally yeah. that weekend. And then we got an email, well, I got an email from uh, the lovely Rachel yeah. at Erwin Heimer Group. And, um, yeah, just saying, oh, you know, got your email, your, your response to the advert. Um, you know, it all looks good. And then we back and forth, didn't we? And then she was like, right, well, next thing really is we need to meet you. So literally four weeks later i think it was just after christmas so it was over our birthday um begin like early january we drove up to durham met up with met up with them L so lovely they literally it was lovely wasn't it, it was so relaxed and um, they put on a lunch it did very nice lunch a yeah. very nice lunch um, and uh, yeah obviously it went really well and that was it there was like yeah it all sounds great and then they started to put the plans in motion because the van was being built, wasn't it? This yes, this very lefts, van, yeah. the Detlefs. So we didn't have any clue what van we were getting or anything like that. We just knew it was going to be a Detlefs or a Detlefs. Yeah. And um, it was being built. It was being shipped over from Germany. And then they got it moved to a dealer near to us in Chichester. And then, yeah, we, we picked it up in April. So we... By that Oops. Sorry about that. <laughs> Can you keep your feet still now, please? And then yeah, we, we picked the pulse up um, in April, and um, we started our we started our touring from there. Yeah, didn't we? So that's it. That's it, really. So that's kind of how we how we got to where we are. So if you're still with us, thank you ever so much. <laughs> <laughs> See you on the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.